Welcome in, Falcons fans, to your Atlanta Falcons fan show. It's your boy Bryce Lewis back again to report on all things Falcons. We have another special guest with us today, Brian Gerbhart, executive producer for 92.9 The Game, joins us today on the show. How are you doing today, Brian? Man, I am doing great. We are uh, finally here with training camp around the corner. We got preseason coming up, you know. Um, really excited to talk about the Falcons and, and tired of talking about the Aaron Rodgers is going to show up for practice and Sean <laughs> Watson. I, I'm tired of all the non-football football talk and I'm I'm ready for actual football to be here and to break it down. So excited to be here. Thanks for uh, having me on. Yeah, man, definitely, definitely. I uh, love having you on, man, getting your expertise in the situation. But so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it, man. So before we actually get into the training camp portion, I want to just take it back a little bit and ask you, so in Arthur Smith and Terry's first off season together, I was looking to see what would you maybe grade this off season, the first off season together with the circumstances, with limited cap, the Julio Jones situation, everything they've tried to do to still make this a, a, a competitive team still coming into the season. What would what do you think so of their entire off season up to this point leading into training camp? Yeah, I would probably give it um, probably like a C plus or a B minus right in, right in that range only because you know, like the moves that were actually made and what happened, it's more of like an F, but the situation that they were given from a financial standpoint uh, made it really hard and just, um, you know, tied their hands back for, for the moves that they were able to make. You know, for everybody who doesn't know at this point, the Julio Jones trade was strictly financial and they had to do that. So it's tough to come in as a new regime and trade arguably the best player in the franchise's entire history as like the first thing you're doing. But uh, I like some of the other moves they made. I like them going out on a limb and, and making the pick with Kyle Pitts. I do think he's that much of a difference maker. So I was excited to see them make that move. And, you know, cause you're gonna have to try to fill that Julio hole somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I liked some of the other picks, even though they didn't wind up getting a running back. Yes, they signed Mike Davis. Um, but I like some of the other draft picks, getting some more offensive linemen, getting some more DBs, because I think mm. those are two of the weaker spots on the team. Um, it would have been nice to get a quarterback. I was kind of in on the uh, the Justin <laughs> Fields situation. I, you know, being a being a Georgia guy as well, I had to sit through yeah. the Jake Fromm Fields dilemma that's been well documented. So um, it would have been nice, especially from the radio standpoint and what we do on a daily basis, to have a a little bit more exciting things happen this off season. But I think Kyle Pitts is going to be a great player in this league. And there's just a lot of other question marks with the, with the other moves they made, trying to patchwork things with some of the veterans. So yeah, overall, I'd probably say C plus for the off season so far from the Falcons. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that's that understandable. Like I said, it was a tight, uh, different off season, a very uh, difficult situation they were walking into, and they had to make the most out of it. And so now it brings us to training camp. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people, fans are kind of like, okay, so what? What are the expectations going into this year? Should we expect to be competing for playoffs? It should just be a lost year? Could we surprise people? One thing I say is this: I remember um, back in 2016. Remember Dan Quinn's second year? Yeah, they mm -hmm. just came off eight and eight year. A lot of people were saying they didn't think the Falcons were going to be that good the second year. A lot of people were not because I guess we didn't make any moves that stood out. And we had a young lot of playing players in defense, and then we shocked everybody. And uh, and usually in the first last two regimes, Mike Smith and Dan, we've been able to actually start off pretty well, I would say, within the first two years of mm -hmm. the regime. So we seem to have good starts. Hopefully that continues. So going into training camp, what what it, what is the position group to you to watch? Like, what's the group where you're just like, this is the group we need to see who comes out of it, who's going to start, who's going to be the guys that they're going to trust week one against Philadelphia? For me, I always go to the least sexy, most sexy position on the field. Uh, as a former offensive lineman myself, I'm always interested to see how that pans out. Um, so who winds up starting at left guard and center? I know there's been a, a good amount of talk about um, could McGarry move inside and move from right tackle? I think they're going to leave him there on the out. They're going to leave Jake Matthews at left. Uh, Chris Lindstrom will probably be your best offensive lineman this year at right guard. He, he's headed towards being, you know, top 10, top five right guard in the league. He, he's on that sort of trajectory. Uh, but as far as for what happens at center and what happens at left guard, uh, is Matt Hennessy the guy or is he too small? Is it going to be Drew Dahlman that steps in there and uh, winds up taking it over? Is it the wild card of, moving Lindstrom over to center. I doubt that happens. It's been talked about a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very curious to see what happens there. And then as far as left guard goes, you know, you still got the Macano, you've got uh, the Josh, Josh Andrews, who's a veteran. And then Jalen Mayfield's the real interesting name for me. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the rookie out of Michigan, has the ability to play guard or tackle. I think he could slide in at guard. And I think they want him to be that left guard and that mauler. So if they can find someone to pair with Chris Lindstrom and finally have that interior offensive line set up in a way um, that Matt Ryan isn't getting hit all the time, that's the most important position to me. And like you mentioned, 2016 and in years past, uh, over the last five, seven years or so with the Falcons, this team goes as the offensive line goes. Mm -hmm. Matt Ryan is who he is. He's got a good offensive line. He's going to be pretty good. And if he isn't, he's, he's not because he can't run. And he, he's not that mobile quarterback. So if this team can shore up the offensive line, I think the expectations are going to be, you know, to compete for a playoff spot. I do think that's realistic, especially because you added the extra playoff spot last year, right? Mm -hmm. And now we have an extra game. So there's going to be, I think they're going to be relevant all the way up to week 13, 14, 15, 16, and, and probably fall in that eight to 10 win range. If they can get to 10, you get to 10 and seven, you'll be a playoff team. So mm -hmm. I think if all goes well, Arthur Smith kicking off the first year, and if they can get this offensive line solidified, um, could be interesting to at least compete for a playoff spot. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think, you know, if this team does, is able to do that, you know, especially again with the roster complications, it's just, it, it kind of shows you, okay, Terry knows what he's doing. He's working what he has, and we're able to build on this probably next year, even though we have some big cap decisions next year as well. And I kind of want to switch over to the defensive side of the ball too. So going to the secondary, um, we have a lot of new names back there, a lot of new names, and then we have a lot of yeah. familiar names. And so there's a, you could maybe say this is an advantage. There could be a lot of death in the secondary, but at the same time, we also need guys who can produce when they do play. Yeah. And, you know, we know AJ's probably slotted in as a starter. I think a lot of people are looking at Deron Harmon, who they picked up as maybe the starter veteran in the secondary. So you have two spots open. Who do you see filling those two other spots? Last time I checked, when I looked at ESPN's depth chart, they had Kendall Sheffield at the other corner and Richie Grant at the safety. What are you feeling? Yeah, I think it'll be Richie Grant, I think, is going gonna, gonna, to uh, file in. I think he's going to wind up being a really, really, really good player. Um, the other guy for me, because I wouldn't necessarily go ahead and pencil uh, pencil in that second cornerback spot just yet. I, I think it's still up for grabs. Fabian Moreau is a guy that people, he's played a lot of football the last couple of years. He's done a lot on special teams, but he's also played in the slot, on the outside, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I think he winds up finding in, or filing in in one of those spots, and Richie Grant has the other one. And whether that's a matter of Sheffield being on the, as a slot corner or on the outside, how he fills in there too. But Fabian Moreau is just a veteran guy that I think this coaching staff is going to wind up liking. There's nothing special about him, but he's a guy who can get the job done, which I think for as this team tries to build a new defense that uh, Moreau could, could wind up being that guy. Yeah, definitely. I, I I told people to look out for him as well because sometimes, yeah. you know, especially with Dean Pease's history, I said in Tennessee, he really didn't have a ton of game changers, but he had a lot of good, solid players. And that's why when they needed a play or when they needed a good game, they could get that. And I think that's what they tried to do with the signings they made this offseason to get guys who were smart, consistent when they did sign guys in free agency, even if they're not game changers, so to say. And so my last question to you before I let you go is uh, now going up to the defensive line or so, you know, since we're seeming that we're going to do three, four, it looks like we're running a base three, four, then we're going to run multiple defenses from that. Sure. Um, what do you, what do you, okay. First, do you expect them to pick up a pass rusher at some point in training camp, especially after releasing Martinez Mingo? And what is your expectations for the group up front? Do you see anybody maybe stepping up from last year? Do you see anybody who could surprise up front as well in the D line? Yeah, D-line is, you know, it's talked about it for years. We've been looking for a, a good pass rusher. I mean, Grady Jarrett's obviously an excellent player and, and is the stalwart on that offensive line, but the Falcons have been looking for that outside pass rusher since John Abraham left. Mm -hmm. um, for me, one of the most interesting names on the Falcons roster and probably the most interesting name on, on the whole defense is Marlon Davidson and what kind of player he becomes this year. He dealt with a lot of random stuff his first year, some injuries. He was on and off the COVID list and never really got it going. You know, obviously all those rookies, including him, didn't have a camp last year really either. And the OTAs and go through all that sort of thing. So I think his development is key. I'm also really interested to see what Jacob uh, Tuiotu Mariner winds mm -hmm. up doing for the team this year. If he can kind of, because he came on very strongly in certain parts. I honestly don't ex expect a lot out of Dante Fowler. I think he's one of those guys that can play if you've got two or three other awesome people around him. But if he's going to be a guy who's double covered from time to time, uh, I think that's an issue. But on defense, 
Marlon Davidson, I'm very, very interested to see what kind of player he becomes. Because if he can pop and wind up being at least a rotational guy, that's going to help out this team so, so much when it comes to the pass rush, to the defense as a whole. Um, and he'll be very useful in a 3-4 or a 4-3. I think he could be that, have that type of versatility. But I want to see the energy that he brought to draft night talking mm -hmm. about you know throwing guys on the floor like rag dolls and i can do that <laughs> because that that's what you know I, you know and a police officer won't come and get me kind of a thing that was one of the great quotes from marlon davis and he was a terrific player at, at auburn um, mm -hmm. you know played big time in some big games um so yeah he's the most interesting name for me on defense if he could pop that would be huge for the falcons this year yeah, yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people are hoping he really takes a big step in his second year and be that other interior force with Grady down there. But mm -hmm. yeah, and also like I said, my other question was like, do you do you see them signing anybody in yeah. the free agency that's pass rusher? Um, I, you know, I actually thought they were going to go after Melvin Ingram. I thought that was a name that the Steelers wind up getting. Uh, as far as I know, Jarrell Casey is still out there, mm -hmm. um, and he's a guy who who's worked with Dean Pease in the past. Um, and a guy that another guy that fits really really well on in a three four spot. I know he's on the older end. I could see them going after him. And something to keep an eye on, not only for the Falcons but for everybody with all this. Not to go down the COVID wormhole, but a lot of free agents. If you're not vaccinated, teams aren't going to sign you right now. That's what's going on with mm. with free agency. And I don't know what that looks like for those guys. But yeah, I'd love to see Jarrell Casey. And I think Jarrell Casey could be the type of guy that's just a veteran, been around, been in a ton of big games. Um, that could help out really the rest of the defense. He's the one guy that actually could come in here and might actually be able to teach Grady even something, mm. you know, or, or help him out in some way and be even a mentor to him. Not that, you know, Grady's as good of a player as Drill Casey was back in his day. But yeah, I'd love to see them add somebody like that. Um, but I, if, it, if it is going to be an addition, I think it'll be on the defensive end at this point. I don't think we'll see anything more on offense unless you have a, uh, an injury at running back because the you know, Falcons are, are thin there as well. But uh, yeah, I would love to see a Jarrell Casey signing from the Falcons. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's actually an interesting name. I haven't actually heard him from what I've seen a lot of that name. So that's actually a really interesting name and probably a, a name that really could help out if he's brought in for the team. And if he is, you know, they say any defensive line help would be important, especially, you know, again, with three, four, they're going to have to, you know, it's a bit of a different scheme change. And, you know, we know Grady can do it. Everybody else has to make the adjustments. We're all learning a new scheme. And it'll be interesting to see what happens when they get on the field. But, you know, that's all the time we have for the Atlanta Falcons Fan Show. Thank you, Brian, for coming on. Shout out yeah. where people can find you before I let you go. Yeah, you can find me at Brian, that's B-R-I-A-N underscore Gebhardt, G-E-B-H-A-R-D-T. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, all those good things. And uh, 10 to 2, 92.9 The Game, Andy and Randy, Monday through Friday. I'm a producer on that show and hop on from time to time. So definitely check us out uh, when you guys get the chance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on. And that was your Atlanta Falcons Fan Show. I'll see you all next time. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, create a profile in Fan Media Network. Then look for the news page in our website and fan show resources page. Help yourself. We give show hosts a show graphic and team colors, a simple short show format, tips on pre- and post-production, ideas to get fans and guests on your show, Apple News distribution and show sponsorship sales and services to help featured show hosts earn money. Show hosts use our iPhone app to publish their shows. Our website supports Android users.